What's up everyone? This is Matt with ConvertKit. Let me go ahead and set this up. The thing that we're going to be talking about today in this Periscope video is ways to do survey and downsell methods in your funnel. I'm going to be taking some questions right after this and I'm going to try and get stuff on the whiteboard in a way that you can see it pretty easily. But, you know, it is a live video. So what I'm going to be talking about, and just welcome to everyone who's coming on, uh, what I'm going to be talking about are downsell and survey methods that you can use at the end of your funnel, okay? So as people are going through your sales sequence, they're learning more, they have opportunities to buy, I'm going to show you how in ConvertKit you can, a way that you can set this up to automatically run through. So it works for either, it works for both it works for both uh, evergreen and single single time launches, but you know you can do, you can do it either way with this same technique. Just remember that you have to kind of specify it to the sales sequence that you're setting it up with. So the first thing that I want to talk with you about is what exactly is a downsell method and what is a survey method and how do they apply to the launches and then what you can do in ConvertKit to automate them. So the first thing, like what is a downsell method? So a downsell in your launch for your product is a way to generate some more sales after the launch, but without really discounting the actual product. Because you don't want to have people that are what, that are going through the sequence and thinking, oh, well, if I wait long enough, they're going to offer me something at a discount. Okay, you don't want people to be thinking that. What you want to do instead, if you are going to do a downsell, is to scale back the kind of the breadth of the product. So let's say you have a $500 premium level course or product, right? Let's take the course for example. So you have 10 modules, you have, um, yeah, you have 10 lessons, you have audio, you have video, you have case studies, you have templates, you have all of these things, okay? $500, $1,000, whatever it is. So for a downsell, what you would do instead of saying like, oh, hey, you know, you didn't buy, how would you like it for $300 instead? You don't want to do that. What you want to do instead is scale it back. So maybe you break it into three different chunks, okay? So you could have, you know, the first third, the, the you know, all that. And what you could do is say, would you rather have, like, this portion of the course entirely, but just a portion for, say, like $200 or $250? Or you can say you can have all 10 modules, but just the text, okay? No audio, no video, no text. Okay, so think of it instead of discounting, think of scaling it back but redu and reducing the price based on the scale of the product instead of discounting it, your entire product, all right, because you don't want to do that. So that's what a downsell is. As another example, when Nathan, our founder, created his authority you know, kind of ebook and product course, uh, what he did was it was originally $300 or $299, something like that, $297. And what he did is the downsell. Because in that he had he had the whole book, he had the audio book, he had um, he had videos, he had interviews with people who had self-published online. He had all of these different things. And what he did for a what he did for a downsell was instead of sharing everything at the 297, he said, "Hey, how would you like just the authority ebook? That was just, so just the text for forty nine dollars." So that's an example of a downsell, and it worked really well for Nathan. Now, if you don't want to scale back your product at all, let's talk about survey methods. And a survey method is a really good way. And I would even do a survey method. I would even do a survey of interested people, okay, specifically interested people in your product. I would do a survey method even if you're also doing a downsell. Here's why. Okay. Now you would want to do survey last after everything is kind of closed down. The survey is the last bit. Now what you're going to do with the survey is that you're going to reach out to the people who are interested but didn't buy. And in ConvertKit, it's really easy to tag them and know who that is. So you're going to reach out to the people who are interested and didn't buy. You can do this automatically with a ConvertKit timed sequence. And you're going to ask them, why didn't you buy? And you're going to you know, elaborate that elaborate on that based on your product and um, reach out to them and say, why, did, why didn't you buy? And then offer them a chance to have a conversation with you about it. Okay, that's really powerful. You're probably not going to get a ton of conversations out of it. So if you're worried about, oh gosh, how am I going to have customer conversations? It's an incredibly valuable thing to do regardless of whether or not you've done a downsell. Because then you can find out 
and what their objections are, what the challenges they had, what was unclear to them. And even if they still don't go through and buy the product, um, then you have really good information that will inform your future launches and help remove some of that you know, ambiguity and you know, help, help make your sales copy that much stronger. So that's what a survey method is. And uh, let's talk about how you can set that up to run automatically inside of a convert kit, okay? So the first thing, I hope uh, everyone, I've seen a few people pop in, happy to have you, and ask any questions in here. And as you can see, I mean, just let me know, I'm assuming you can kind of see all this, okay? So the first thing that we're talking about is we're gonna have this tag in ConvertKit for interest. Okay, so we've got our interest in tag. That these are people who are interested in the product. All right. You can set this up in your ConvertKit automation. Say, you know, clicks a link, it's the buy now link. They're going to be tagged as interested. Okay, so we have this. We have our interested tag now. Um, now, remember, we can also set this up with a buyer tag. Okay. And the reason this is important is that we want to know when someone who's interested has also bought, okay? Because what's also gonna happen when this buy, when the product is purchased and this buy tag is added, we also want it to remove this interested tag. Because we want in ConvertKit to have an always updated num uh, number of people who are interested and people who have bought, okay? And that's what this automation rule allows us to see. The other thing that we can do, okay, so now we know who our buyers are, we know who's interested, and we know that we're kind of that we're at the end of that sales sequence. So what we want to do with these people who are interested is when this interested tag is added, we're also going to add to interest sequence. Okay. And you can do this for a down sale or a survey. We're going to add them to the interest sequence. Another thing to note on this interest sequence is this is the important part: is if your entire initial sales sequence, okay, is say 21 days, you want to start the interest-based follow-up sequence. Okay, this is a follow-up sequence. You want to start that one one at least one day after your sales sequence ends. Okay, so. We want to set that first email timing. We want to set the timing of this first email. So if it's a 21, if the sales sequence is 21 days, we're going to set this one to 22 days. All right? And that ensures that you're not sending you know, follow-up surveys or downsell emails to people while they're still getting the initial sales email. Right? Does that make sense? Okay, so you can do this for a sales or a down sales sequence. And let me just go back in right here. And elaborate on the survey method just a little bit. Okay, a survey really or a down sell really only needs to be one or two emails. Because if people are interested and they haven't bought, I, to me, you do want to ask them one more time, but you don't want to keep hammering them with three, four, Eight, you know, six emails of like, hey, I saw you're interested. They're like, yeah, and I didn't buy. Okay, but one or two emails, especially if you're delivering a specific value or you're giving them another option, one or two emails is, I think, totally fine, and you should feel okay about that. But again, for the survey, you're going. The big things are you're going to ask them why. Why didn't they buy? Um, you know, what were the objections? What were the drawbacks? Was anything not clear? Is there something that they were looking for that they didn't get in the video? All these are things that you can totally ask and should. The other thing is you want to offer them a call. And I like to use a service called Calendly. Okay, just Google that and it'll come up. I don't know if it's like Calendly or Calendly.com. I don't know. Just Google it. But what that allows you to do is put a link in your emails that says, hey, book a call with me. And I would um, keep it at 15 minutes, but have that conversation with them, okay? 
Because let me give you a concrete example. This had this showed up in the Facebook group a couple of months ago where I saw this working. And a guy was selling a $500 product, and he had 50 people at the end of his sales sequence that had clicked that they were interested but didn't go through and buy. So he has 50 really high quality you know, leads and prospects for this course that he was selling. And he didn't want to do a down sale method because he wanted to sell at full price. Totally understandable. So again, he had 50, 50 tagged with interest. And he had 50 tagged with interest. And he sent this out, and I'm not 100% sure on the numbers uh, memory wise, but I believe he had 10 or 15 uh, calls scheduled after this. So maybe I think it was 15 people responded to him, and he ended up having uh, 10 calls also. So we've got 15 responses, people that gave him specific feedback. This is really, this is really fantastic. 15 responses, 10 calls, and get this, five more sales. Five more sales at $500 product, all because he sent out this survey, he had 15 responses that he talked, that he uh, you know, had some kind of communication with, 10 live calls, and five more sales. So he did all this, let's do the math together, that's five sales, at a product equals $2,500 in additional revenue. So I don't know about you, I know I would have, 50, I know I would swap 15 emails and I would have 10 calls with people who are interested in the product if it meant that I was getting, you know, that much of a boost in sales. And I know I would do that for $2,500. I think all of you watching, you know, just hit the hearts if that's something that you would do as well. Again, I know I would do that. So if you look at this, this is uh, what we're talking about when it comes to a down sell and a survey function inside of ConvertKit, all right? Something that you can set up automatically to run by itself, okay? So that it's always going through and really all you need to do is just keep checking your email to see, you know, who's asking me questions about the product that I'm trying to sell and, you know, when do I need to have a conversation with someone? This week. So thanks for watching this. I'm going to keep doing these videos probably once a week on Wednesdays. We also do the can for a you know bigger you know, workshop style with screen shares and everything. We also have um, we also have a like I said that workshop you can sign up for it at convertkit.com forward slash learn. And yeah saw the saw the note on the microphone Definitely we'll probably uh, upgrade to that in the future. We just started doing these and wanted to test it out a little bit, but totally agree that a little bit of uh, better sound would be helpful for everyone. So thanks so much for the comment. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hitting the hearts. And yeah, keep watching these on, on Periscope and Twitter and really appreciate that. And so yeah, uh, Jay, this replay will be going here in just a couple of minutes, but yeah, that's you know, to survey and tag within ConvertKit is something you can do just uh, if that wasn't clear from the video, just uh, reach back out to me. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care.